worship you and we celebrate your victory, the victory of your cross. Thank you for, for your resurrection. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing, your spirit. Now, Lord, minister to us in your word. Touch our lives. Revive us, O oh God. Restore us, empower us, Lord. We open our hearts. Come afresh into each one of us. In Jesus' name, we pray we give thanks. Amen. Amen. God bless you. This week, we are talking about Joseph. We started on Sunday. And on Sunday, we are looking at the similarities of Joseph and Jesus. And, uh, and, uh, and then on Tuesday, we, look, we looked at the court, the tunic of Joseph. And we said he was a tunic of trouble. There were many, many challenges in the life of Joseph because of the favor and the court that he received from his father, Jacob, and even later on, the court he received from Potiphar. Yesterday, we were looking at Joseph as a fruitful branch. And we say that God wants us to be fruitful. And we talked about areas we need to be fruitful. But for us to be fruitful, Joseph was planted by the well. Talking of the word of God, connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. And there's a purpose of fruitfulness is so that we can be a blessing, we can touch lives, we can comfort other people with the comfort we are receiving in the Lord. Today, we are in Genesis 37 and we are reading verse 2 and 3. Genesis 37, verse 2 and 3. And the title of the message is A Treasure Among Trash. A treasure surrounded by trash. A treasure among trash. Genesis 37, verse 2 and 3. The Bible says that this is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wife. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Verse 3, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his brethren because he was the son of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. Now, in the Bible, Joseph and Daniel are two major characters who have no record of sin. There is no sin mentioned in the life of Joseph. There is no sin mentioned in the life of, uh, of Daniel. And Joseph is a godly person who is growing in a godly soil. He is surrounded by brothers and, and uh, Potiphar, the wife of Potiphar, even in prison. I mean, he's surrounded by people who are, who are full of vice and violence. The family of Joseph, the brothers particularly, they were, they were vile. I mean, they, they, you look at them, they are guilty of murder. They are guilty of adultery. They are guilty of incest. They are guilty of lying. Study the life of the brothers of Joseph. Yet, Joseph is a treasure surrounded by all this trash, surrounded by this evil, wicked man. And, 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 and uh, to show how God values, you know, you know, a life that uh, people who serve him and follow, follow, follow God like Joseph. Twelve chapters. Twelve chapters are dedicated to, 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 to Joseph in Genesis. A quarter of the book of Genesis is given to Joseph just to show the priority of God, where God's focus is. And I want us to learn three things about the life of Joseph today. Three things about the life of Joseph. Number one, the purity of Joseph. The purity of Joseph. We look, we see his integrity. You see, integrity means firmness of character. And you look, you study Joseph, and you find somebody who is holy, a man of integrity, whether people are watching or not. He, he, he has the fear of God in his life. You see, where we read today, Joseph is reporting the vile, you know, the vice. The, 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 the wickedness, the sinfulness of his brothers. He goes to his father and he reports, not, not that he's a gossiper, not that he's a snitch, no, no, no. He is a, it's not that he knew that it would offend his brothers. 
Yet, according to Joseph, he cared so much about his father that he did. He was not afraid of how his brothers would take him. I mean, his, his priority, his, his focus, his intention was to please his father. You know, I look at Jesus, just like, like the way we were talking on Sunday about the similarities of Joseph and Jesus, as much as we did mention this, this is another similarity between Joseph and Jesus. Jesus said that in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, Luke chapter 2 verse 52, he said to his father, his parents, when they were looking for him, he said, how come you didn't know that I must be about my father's business? The focus of Jesus on earth was to please the father. In fact, he also said in John chapter 8 and verse 29, John chapter 8 and verse 29, Jesus said, The Father has not left me. He is always with me because I always do the things that please my Father. Glory to God. So, so, so Joseph is accountable to his Father. He cares about his Father. And I want to put it to you that at any given moment, in any situation in life, wherever you are, you are either in the fear of God or you are in the fear of men. You are either seeking to please men or you are seeking to please God. The Bible says in Galatians 1 and verse 10, Galatians 1 verse, verse 10, Galatians 1 10, Paul put it this way, I do no longer seek to persuade men, but God. For if I seek to please men, I am not a servant of God. You cannot be serving God. You cannot be wanting to have a close and neat relationship with God and all you care about is the opinion of men. What is your concern? Are you concerned with opinions of men or are you concerned with pleasing God? That is Joseph. His, his, his concern is not how, how the brothers will take him, but he's concerned by the cares of his father. And I put it to you, we need at any given moment to subscribe to the fear of God and not the fear of men. Bible says that in Proverbs 9 verse 10, Proverbs 9 verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Again, Proverbs 1 verse 7, Proverbs 1 verse 7, the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. So, so you want wisdom? You want knowledge? It is found in the fear of God. Also Proverbs 22 and verse 4. Proverbs 22 verse 4. The Bible says that with humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. You want riches? You want honor? You want life? Then go in the path of humility and the fear of the Lord. There is no middle ground. You are either in the fear of God or in the fear of man. Talking about the fear of man in Proverbs 29 and verse 25. Proverbs 29 and verse 25, the Bible says that the fear of man is a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord is safe. So I put it to you, there is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. You are either living in the fear of God or you are living in the fear of man. You are either doing things in the fear of God or you are doing things to please men in the fear of, of men. So number one, we see the purity of Joseph. Number two, the promise of Joseph. The promise of, of Joseph. I'm talking about the inspiration. The, the, the inspiration of Joseph. You see, God gave to Joseph dreams about his life. He declared to Joseph the end, even before the from the beginning, you know, when he was still young, God was showing Joseph his destiny. We know how he shared his dream with his brothers, and he said, "I saw, I saw your sheaves bowing to my sheep." I, I, and he said that I saw ten stars and, and, and the sun and the moon bowing before me. Now the sheaves they talk about uh, sheaves. Sheaves represent world resources. The stars, on the other hand, represent world rulers. So, so what, what, we, what, we, what, what God is showing Joseph here is that I will make world resources to bow before you. I'm going to make world leaders to bow before you. See, in Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, 
Amos chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible says, Surely God will do nothing without revealing to his servants the prophet. You see, before God does anything on earth, he reveals to his servants. And I want to say this, before God does anything in your life, if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are serious with your life, if you, are, if, you, if you want to, if, you know, if you connect with God, I'm sure if God reveals to the world, I mean to the prophet, what he's doing in the world, I'm sure God is more than willing to reveal to you concerning your life. He did it to Joseph and he's not a respecter of person. So, so all, is, all we are required to do is to, is to you know, is to, is, to, is to tune in, to tune in to, to God's wavelength so that we can get that dream. We can get our vision. Or when we are studying the word, we can get a scripture, you know, that's going to serve as inspiration. Or you can hear that still small voice of the Spirit of God talking on, you know, revealing to your heart your destiny. God, as he, he, he gave Joseph a dream. And I, I, want to, I want to submit to us that it is through that dream that Joseph was given, the promise that was given to Joseph, that inspiration, that is what made Joseph to survive the pit, to go through the Potiphar's house as a slave, and even to stand in prison ultimately to become a prime minister in a foreign land. What was giving Joseph the energy, you know, the, 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 the motivation, the encouragement, not his family. His family was not with him in Egypt. In, 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 if anything, his brothers hated him. But Joseph had a dream. Joseph had a promise. And that promise was the fuel. It, it, it is what that enabled Joseph to keep on keeping on. And I, I want to put it to you. Receive a promise from God. Receive a, a word from God. Receive an inspiration from God. You look at Jesus in John chapter 13, verse 3 and verse 4. John 13, verse 3 and 4. Jesus, the eve of his crucifixion, the night, what we call the last supper, as he was having the last supper with his disciples. Bible says there in John 13, verse 3 and verse 4, that knowing that the Father had given him all things, and knowing that he had come from the Father and he was going to the Father, verse 4 says that, that he rose from supper, he, he, he put aside his garment, he took a towel and he started washing his disciples' feet to such a point that, that, that Peter protested, you cannot wash my feet. Why? How is Jesus able to face the cross? How is he able to save his slaves or his masters when he's the man in authority? I mean, naturally, it is the slave who washes the master's feet. I put it to you because Jesus knew something. We are told there in verse 3, he knew that God had given him all things. He knew that he had come from the Father and he knew that he was going to the Father. It is that revelation that Jesus had. It is the promise that Jesus had that enabled him to face the cross and even to, to serve in humility when he was, he was there on earth. My question to you is, uh, do you know, do you have a vision, do you have a promise from God? Do you have a dream from God? God said to Habakkuk, in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3, God said to Habakkuk, write the vision down because it is of, of an appointed time so that he who reads may run. You know, God is giving you a dream, not a dream for you to sleep over, but God is revealing something to you so that you can run with it. And he said to Habakkuk, the vision, though it tarry, wait for it, because surely it will come to pass. And I put it to you, if God spoke to you, it may be five years ago, it may be last month, it may be right now, it may be last night, God is giving you a dream and inspiration. You wait for it. I put it to you, it may tarry, but it will come to pass. We are talking about the promise of God to Joseph. For Joseph, it had to take like 15 years or 13 years there about. I mean, he was a teenager when God gave him a promise. But when he was at the age of 30, he was pushed or he was, he was picked from prison to the palace. Second Corinthians 1 and verse 20. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 20, the Bible says that all the promises of God in Christ Jesus, they are yes and they are amen. In Christ Jesus, if God has given you a promise, you just need to stay in Christ, in Him, in Christ, 
every dream, every vision, every promise that God has given us, He will perform it. He will fulfill it in your life. So number one, we've talked about the purity of Joseph. Number two, we are talking about the promise of Joseph. And number three, the promotion of Joseph. The increase of Joseph. The promotion of Joseph. His increase, his lifting. And I have good news for you. Maybe you've been through the pit. Maybe you've been through slavery. Potiphar's house. Maybe you've been through prison. Your lifting time has come. Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. The Bible says that promotion, increase, it does not come from the east or from the south or from the west. Promotion comes from God. God is the judge. He's the one who puts one down. He's the one who sets another one up. Promotion comes from God. And we see it in the life of Joseph. We see how God lifted Joseph. It is God in the life of Joseph who made all the difference. If you read in Genesis 39 and verse 2, Genesis 39 and verse 2, when Joseph was sold as a slave to Potiphar, Bible says that, and God was with Joseph and he was a successful person. His success he didn't have money. He didn't have a job, a good job. He's a slave. He's in a foreign country. He didn't have wealth. But because God was in his life, the Bible says Joseph was successful. So at no time did Joseph divorce his life from God. He was a man of purity. He was a man of integrity. And I want to say to you, that God notices integrity. God notices faithfulness. You know, God is able to see in secret. God was seeing the integrity of Joseph when he's reporting his brothers, when he's being thrown in the prison, when he's serving Potiphar's house faithfully, when he flees from fornication, when even in prison, he's faithful in his assignments. God was seeing all this. I want to put it to you. Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6, that those who pray in secret, there is a God who is able to see your faithfulness, your giving of yourself, even in secret. You know, it talks about even giving, it talks about even fasting, it talks about even love and forgiving. Those who do it in secret, there is a God who sees in secret, and he who sees in secret, God says that he shall bless, he shall reward, publicly. And you see Joseph being rewarded publicly when he's removed from prison and in a, in a twinkling of an eye he's made second in command in the land of Egypt. In Matthew 25 and verse 21 Matthew 25 verse 21 to encourage you you who's been doing good you who's been witnessing and serving and giving and, 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 and even laying, laying down your rights, you know, laying down your opinions for the sake of Christ's name. Bible says there in Matthew 25 verse 21 that everything you've been doing, though men may not notice, though you may not be appreciated in this world, Jesus says when we arrive in heaven, we shall hear this testimony from God. Well done, you good and faithful servant. So I want to put it to you that your faithfulness in serving, your faithfulness for, to the name of God, it shall not go to waste. In Luke 16 and verse 10, Luke 16 verse 10, Jesus put it this way. He who is faithful in little is also faithful in much. He who is faithful in little is faithful in much. In other words, if you are faithful in the position that God has given you, in that relationship which God has given to you. I want to put it to you that is a God who is seeing your faithfulness and like he rewarded he promoted Joseph. Your promotion time has also come. Your lifting time has come or it's coming sooner than even later. In Jesus name. Promotion comes dressed in persecution. I think we may not notice it. It comes, you know, covered. It comes enveloped. Promotion comes enveloped in persecution and some people are missed on their promotion because 
undergoing persecution, they've compromised. They have lost their faithfulness. Joseph did. He was persecuted by his brothers. He was persecuted by Potiphar's wife. He's, he's, you know, he's mistreated. He's, he's uh, unlawfully put in prison. But in all these stages, he held on to his faithfulness. And the favor of God was manifested in his life. And I want to put it to you that our God is God of favor. He favored Joseph. He's going to favor you. In a man of purity, a man who had a promise, finally, ultimately, we see by the favor of God in his life, favor pushing Joseph from background to forefront. One day of favor is more than a lifetime of labor. I put it to you again. One day of favor is more than a lifetime of labor. Joseph had labored for many, many years. But one night, Pharaoh had a dream. And there was nobody in Egypt to interpret that dream. He took this prisoner, a man who had a promise, a man who had a, who had a purity in his life. Because time for to be promoted, time for progress for Joseph had come. Let me tell you, if you can endure the process, you will enjoy the promise. If you can endure the process, you will enjoy the promise. There's a promise in your life, it's going to be manifested with promotion in your life. But you may need, like Joseph, to go through the pit, to go through Potiphar's house, to go through the prison. You may need, like Jesus, to, 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 to wear a cross. You know, you may need, like Jesus, to bear the cross before you wear a crown. You may need to, to bear the cross before you wear the crown. I'm, I'm talking of Hebrews 12, I'm finishing now. In Hebrews 12, verse 1 to verse 4. Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 4. I want to see how Jesus had built in his life. He had a promise and he ended up being promoted. The Bible says that, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which easily as near as us. And then he says that, and let us run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. In other words, Jesus saw, you know, he had a promise, he had a revelation, he had an inspiration, there is a crown ahead, there is a joy ahead. He endured the cross. Despising the shame. And verse 3 says, Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you be weary and discouraged in your souls. And it says that none of you have resisted to bloodshed against him. In other words, consider Jesus. If Jesus he, he, he bore the cross, he wore the crown. And you too, there's a crown awaiting you. There's a promotion awaiting you. But that promotion will, 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 need, will need your faithfulness, your integrity, even in the midst of the persecutions. May require you to endure the process, that cross. Then you can enjoy the promise. You can see what resources, the shields, and you can see what rulers bowing before you. Because your time to be favored has come. Consider Jesus. Look at Joseph. Let, let him serve as an example of God's faithfulness to us. He had purity, integrity in his life. He had a promise. He had an inspiration in his life. An inspiration of the word of God. And finally, the man, Joseph, was promoted. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord, I praise His name. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every day shall bow.
Now I pray in Jesus' name that none of us is going to faint. None of us is going to be weary and discouraged. But Lord, I pray that we shall be those who continue in faithfulness, in holiness and righteousness and integrity, in the fear of God, to the saving of our souls. And I pray, O oh God, in Jesus' name, bring us to visions and revelations, O oh God. Give us a dream. Speak to us. Enlighten our eyes of understanding that we may see our destiny, that we may know that which you are holding for us. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, may you fill our lives with your presence. Show us your favor. Lord, lift our head again. Lift, lift us up. Fight our battles and give us a victory. Make room for us, O oh God. We thank you, we worship you. We honor you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. God bless you.